Hey, what's up folks? Sorry I have been out of contact for a while. I went on a two-week vacation and it was awesome. I don't know that I've ever done that before. Went to Arizona, California, and Hawaii, and the Wi-Fi was great in all those places. So it was it was awesome. But I'm back and I wanted to post a quick update on something I've been working on for in between vacation the last three weeks or so and that is a complete from the ground up rewrite of the quality of life explorer and it's going to be kind of awesome uh, the big change you can see from here and this isn't going to be a whole in-depth sort of look we'll, we'll do that in the future this is just kind of where it's going and a little bit about how it's getting there Current dashboard is a single metric thing. You look at one metric at a time, which is fine. This dashboard, you can look at as many metrics at once as you want. And then we've got three up, we can add a couple more, and it's just going to wrap those intelligently using CSS Grid here as it has room. And you can rearrange these, so you can drag drag things around and we'll put them wherever and you can close ones you don't want to see you can put as many metrics up as you want and it's doing that it's using CSS grid and it's using a library called draggable for view to drag that stuff around I had before uh, I had a blog poster I was experimenting on ways to do this and you can do it with a CSS grids order property but view draggable kind of solved all that stuff so I went with that uh, the thing that's really given me fits over the last couple of weeks is layout and which is weird because I usually don't have layout issues but uh, the layout on this is super complicated it's a CSS grid but it's a grid where one element of the grid has a different uh, size than the others. The first element is styled differently. Unless it's, say, in a mobile mode where they're all going to be small. And there's issues like, I, I whenever I would drag a map over here, I would see that the Mapbox.gl map was too small. It turns out Mapbox.gl has a listener on the window resize event and when the window resizes it will fire at the map resize which will make the canvas go to the size of its container if something had changed. Well here we're not changing the window size. And I also have other reactive stuff based on this card size like here I'm hiding you know this other stuff and over here you just see it because it's larger. And over here you have a, re, a map you can interact with and has background layers and so forth and these are our static full size static in the sense you can't pan or zoom them maps with no background so all of that has to be adjusted based on the position and the layout and to do that I'm using uh, resize observer which is an experimental feature it's only supported in Chrome but what it does is instead of looking at a window resize event, you can have a resize listener for any element on the page. And when it changes, you can take whatever actions you need to for that. It is an experimental feature, so what I'm using is a pony fill. Uh, if you haven't heard of that, a pony fill is different from a polyfill. A polyfill gives browsers that don't have a native capability that capability. A pony fill basically takes over that capability for all the browsers, whether it has that natively or not. And the reason why you'd want to do that is because with an experimental feature, the API might change, which will break your stuff, or the API might be at this point implemented differently in different browsers, which is going to break your stuff. And there's also a remote possibility that the API just might get scratched. That happened with uh, Object Observe, which uh, I'm still a little bitter about. Uh, but in this case with this pony fill, even if the whole thing was, was scratched, it would still keep working. 
So it's using Race Size Observer, which is kind of neat. And I'll show you code for all this stuff later. I'm just I'm just doing hand wavy stuff right now. Uh, what else I gonna tell you? Drag and drop. You notice this one has different colors, not only different colors, but a different number of breaks. Now you can set a custom color scheme for different variables, and it'll take the number of colors you've specified for that color scheme and make that the number of breaks on the fly. So this one has six breaks, this one has five. I've also switched it to using CK means instead of that janky Jenks library I found. CK means is coming from JavaScript simple statistics. And with it, I can do an entire data, entire metrics all the years and factor it into the breaks. Whereas Jenks, once I did more than three years, it hit some really big performance bottlenecks. Now it's perfectly fine. So the color's customizable. Big thing for a lot of you folks, uh, you can have different geographies. So the dashboard as it is only uses one geography type. And a lot of people have been using more than one and that requires a lot of shoehorning. This one out of the box will let you, it'll have a default geography type and then you can metric by metric set a different geography uh, if you need to. So you can have block groups, you can have zip codes, you can have whatever else you want. Uh, a limitation of that is I'm selecting things here and it's selecting it everywhere because this is all the same geography type. If you have more than one geography type, the selection will be by geography type. So you might have these selected over here, you might have different ones selected in say block groups. And that's all being managed and saved and shared in the URL by geography type. So all of that will be maintained that way. But now, it just out of the box, you'll be able to do multiple geography types. Uh, we're very excited about that. I think it's going to help a lot of people that have been having to do a lot of code work to get that to work for their uh, organization. A uh, couple other things. The print is going to be awesome. Right now, the report and the embed are different projects, different GitHub projects that you can kind of chain together. Now the print and the embed are going to be built right in. And the print, what it's going to do is just on the fly restyle the page. And you'll be able to go into your metrics and set any particular pan and zoom you want or do the crazy flip them up in the air kind of stuff. Uh, to whatever metrics you specified, and each one of these is about the size of a page, and then just hit print and it'll come up with a, a nice neat little print like this. Yeah, I, I made the county upside down for this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's printing out an extra blank page. I don't know why. You know what? I don't care. Because uh, debugging that kind of thing and print styling is, is, is no fun. You just hit close here and it just reformats the screen again. And you do that all just on the fly. Got this idea from the geniuses of the New York Planning Labs. They use uh, a paper CSS library. I'm not doing that. So I looked at that and that goes way, way up, way up into your stuff. And uh, I really didn't need all that. But the idea of putting, just clicking a button and putting a class called print on your body and having that ripple down restructure everything, oh, that was a really good idea. So it's doing that same sort of thing in a much simpler way. And that's just kind of what's coming forward with the dashboard. Code's still a big mess and I need to do the embed, which currently doesn't do, actually it's, it doesn't do anything. And I need to put a search on here somewhere. And I need to clean up some really ugly code. Uh, but hopefully by the end of this month, this will at least be in a dev branch on the project. And the, the data, which for the quality of life is a separate repo, that way you can swap in uh, uh, new data configuration you know, on, a, as you want to. Um, it's changing a little bit. 
how you save the data does not ch hasn't changed a bit so that's all perfectly fine um, but some of the configuration options and where those are stored are, are changing and you're going to have additional configuration options and some things are just automated like whatever geography type you use it's just going to get the zoom to fit that on the map from that geojson itself so you won't be storing things like that um, you won't need to like before the metadata was really wonky because i was doing some text processing on that to put in different places now it's just going to dump that metadata html straight into a pop-up or a modal um, so you won't have to worry about the formatting there at all anymore you can format it any way you want oh another neat thing you can download this population density metric as a csv you can download it just the selected as csv you can download it as geojson or just the selected as geojson so you can in metric by metric download that as a csv or a geojson file so you can drop it straight into qgis or uh, whatever thing you've paid too much money for so all this stuff is coming and i will do a big code review and and go into nooks and crannies when it's ready but it's a bit of a mess right now i just wanted to give you an update and let you know what i've been working on and that this is coming down the pipe and Hopefully this will be in a pretty clean working state by the end of the month. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.